Welcome to another demo for MicroStrategy and uh, today what we're doing is uh, talking about search objects first the different formations and the different ways to create them and then how to use them in reports to create dynamic reports okay so first thing first let me show you a search let me use a generic uh, location like here right click and search for objects and notice it searches in the folder that I'm that I initiated it from so let's just search for something anything that starts with the word time or has the word time in it there you go a bunch of reports I can also specify only those reports for instance that were modified in a certain time so let's say modified between 2000 9, 14. Okay, there we go. Gives me a subset of those, for instance. And this is giving me a combination. So it can be the time and the date combination. Okay. You can also say of object type, I only want it to show me reports, not documents, for instance. So I can say reports. Fine now. And there you go. It's only bringing back the report. And I can furthermore say for a specific owner that I choose so I can do that something like administrator and find now there we go so you have all these options that are allowed with searches you also can modify what's displayed in the search results so you can add something like creation time description etc there you go it comes back you could also have a contains tab right here so I want all reports that contain, for instance, a consolidation. None of them did. Maybe a custom group. Also none of them. Maybe a drill map. Well, apparently none of them do either. So let's do something even more generic. A metric. There you go. So all of them have metrics in them. You get the point. You can just uh, modify this or contained by a dashboard for instance you can do that alright so this is the generic idea of how to do a search you can also export your search results to text simple there you go you can copy and paste it into Excel to get more the, 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 a clearer view of the information let me just do that quickly since I use it a lot there you go so you can save this, send it to somebody by email, or document it, or record it somewhere for later use, or just as a reference, okay? It gives you all the information that you were seeing earlier. Okay, I'm going to close this. And close this. Okay, so you get the idea here. You can also export it as a project documentation HTML document that you can use. It gives you a better feel and look if you're trying to document things but I wouldn't use that much. You can also search by ID of an object rather than by name. So if you have an error and it gives you a specific ID, like uh, object, you're doing object merge and it gives you an error because an ID conflict, you can bring the ID here and search by the ID, type the ID number in here, and, uh, and then search for it. And it'll give you the results if it's valid. If it's not, it'll give you an error, etc. So those are the main I concepts that I want to talk about when using searches okay let's create a new search and use it in a report so I'm going to search for let's search for filters okay so all of these are all the filters in my filter I didn't specify a name so it returned all the filters but I want it to be to not return folders I want it to return only filter types. There we go. These are all my filters. Apparently I have 199 in this project. Okay. Now what I can do is save this. Save it as. And I call it my filters. There we go. So I'm not specifying. I'm not limiting. I just want all my filters to come back. Okay. So I saved it. Now I can close. There it is. All my filters. Now I can embed this in an object prompt. It's very simple and very useful. Object prompt, next. And instead of predefined list of objects, I'm going to use the result of my search. These are generic searches that my show provides to you out of the box. But I want to go and show mine. 
all my filters. Great. Next, I don't want to edit it. There we go. Search all my filters is the name of my prompts. I'm going to save it called search all my filters. There it is. Now I'm going to embed it in a report. So I'm going to create a new report. <clears throat> okay. And let's just use, I don't really care. Any attribute will do it for me because I don't want to run it. And then right here, I'm going to drag this. See, it allowed me to drag it right here because it knew that this object is an object of filters. If it was an object of attributes, you wouldn't be able to drag it here, but you might be able to drag it here and have the user select which attributes show up at runtime. In this case, it was a search based on filters, so I can embed it in the local filter. So again, what are you searching for? Filters, you can embed it in the filter. You're searching on attributes, you can embed it in the attribute. Searching on metrics, you can embed it in the template right here, and the user has the opportunity to select a, a metric out of that search result. There we go, so I'm gonna save this and close it. I'm gonna just call it new report. There it is, new report, run it in desktop, and there you go. It's providing me the list of all mine that I can select from, okay? That was very easy and very useful. Again, you could create a search on attributes and embed it as part of the attribute search. So let me show you how we can do that quickly. So let's do a search, oops, sorry, search. And I'm going to search on the different attributes that have something like date in them. See, all right. So it brought back everything, and I just want the object type date. <coughs> I mean attribute. Apparently, nothing came back. So let's just do uh, something more generic like a. Well, didn't like that either. So let's do. A specific search. Oh, okay, I see my mistake. I'm doing on public objects, but attributes are not in public objects, right? So let's see where they are. 464. Because I did an A, so everything with an A came back, okay? So I'm going to save this. Save this as my A attributes. Obviously, I'm not using it for a specific business example. I'm just using it as a generic example. There it is, all my A attributes. Create a new prompt. Object prompt, and I'm limited by all my A attributes. Okay. Search, I'm going to name it search my A attributes. There it is. And I'm going to embed it in our prompted report. Edit this report. And let's see if I can drag it. All my A attributes. Notice I can drag it here, but I can't put it here because it's it knows that this search is contains attributes. There we go. Save and close. And let's run it and see what it does. All right, so it allows us to select from our attributes. Obviously, I didn't change the default name of the prompt, so it says object. So this is my attributes, all my A attributes. And this one was all my filters, okay? So you see how this becomes a useful and a very flexible tool. One of the neat ways to use this is to create a subfolder drop a bunch of filters in it, make a search on all the items in that filter, and use that in a report. And every time you add a filter to that subfolder, uh, it automatically gets pulled in the search engine. So this search is not static. Anytime you add, you create a new attribute with that starts with an A, it will pick it up. Anytime you create a new filter that's in the filters folder, it will automatically pick it up. Okay. So this is how it works, and that's why it's useful, because it's dynamic and it's not static. Alrighty, this will end our session about searches and how to use them in prompts and reports. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.